Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's Chemistry Webcast. Today, we're talking about how to properly record measurements in the chemistry laboratory. Well, in all laboratories, but we're focusing on chemistry today. So here's our situation to get us started. We've got a graduated cylinder on the left, and it's holding some volume of a blue liquid. We presume it's a blue liquid. We've got a magnifying glass held up to this illustration so we can see it more in more detail. And then on the right, we have this beaker that can handle overflows and it's also containing some volume of a blue liquid. But what I'm really interested in are the markings here. If we look at the graduated cylinder on the left, each line on the graduated cylinder is differentiating for two mils. Whereas on the beaker on the right, each division is separated by 100 mils. And so we don't want to report these volume measurements in the same way because we have such different markings on the measuring devices and we need to take this into account properly. So here's how we do it for proper quantitative measurements in the lab. You read the values directly off the scale and then you add one estimated value if one estimated digit. And that's always one place beyond the scale markings of the measurement device. So in that beaker that had markings every hundred, we could estimate to the tenth, tens. Whereas in the graduated cylinder, it was marked off every two, so we could estimate to 0.2, which is in the tenths place. So you always read between the lines. You can sort of imagine in your mind that the space between the markings has 10 invisible markings, and you can use that to estimate that last digit, that estimated value. So you always have one estimated value in your measurement. So let's do some practice. All right, so let's look at this thermometer, all right? And we see that there's a red liquid in it. It's just below the 150 degree mark. Well, how do we report this properly? Well, you have to look at the smallest markings, right? Each marking is 10 degrees. So it's marked to the tens, so we can report to the ones place, all right? And so our estimated digit would be in the ones place. So you know, it's pretty close to 150, but it is a little bit below that. So I thought that 149 degrees Celsius seemed appropriate. Like I said, there's a little bit of wiggle room. So you might've said, no, it's more 148 and that's okay. We're both in agreement. Um, that last digit is estimated. We're not always going to agree on the value of that last digit, but it should be very close to, to each other for doing it properly. All right, let's go on and do some more practice. All right, let's look at another volume measurement. So here's another graduated cylinder, but this graduated cylinder, when we look at it, you can see that each line separates one milliliter. So the smallest division is to one milliliter to the ones place. We can go one place over, so we can report this to the tenths. All right, so an appropriate reading, I'm looking at the bottom of the meniscus, and to me that looks like it's right on the 43 mark, so I'm going to report it as 43.0 milliliters. Now, again, there's a little bit of wiggle room. If you said it was 42.9 or 43.1, that's fine, but it really should be within that range. All right, let's do another measurement. Let's look at a length. So I'm looking at this centimeter ruler, all right, and I can see that there are 10 markings between each centimeter, so they're marked to the millimeter. They're marked to a tenth of a centimeter, so we can estimate to a hundredth of a centimeter. So our last estimated digit, we should have two digits after the decimal place. So I'm reporting this answer as 2.32 centimeters. You might have thought it was 2.33 centimeters. That's fine. Your, your answer makes sense, right? It's very close to the length of the red bar and your estimated digit is in the right place and it's reasonable. All right, what's the mass? All right, so we've got a quad beam balance here, all right? And we're going to be able to estimate this to 0.001 grams. Now, how do I know that? Look at the bottom part of the quad beam balance, all right? It's marked to a hundredth of a gram, all right? So you can see that it's labeled 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, etc. But there are 10 lines in between 0.5 and 0.6. So the marking is to 0 0.01 grams, so we can estimate to 0.001 grams. In other words, we should have three digits after the decimal in this mass reading. So then we have to look at the hundreds and the tens and the ones places to get all the values and put them all together and we get a mass reading of 183.600 grams. Now again, you might have thought it was 0.599 or 0.601 and that's okay. 
but they should be very close to each other. They sh should have the estimated digit in the right place. That's what we're looking for in terms of doing this accurately. Just to wrap things up, all right, because we are going to do more practice with this in class. When you're recording measurements, you read what you can directly from the scale and you add that one estimated digit. And remember, you think about that space in between being divvied up mentally into 10 identical spaces and use that to do your estimation. And then you always want to have appropriate units. You should never record a measurement without a unit. Oh, right, that's tacky. We would never do that. No. Okay, we're going to end here and we'll talk later.